Jack the Ripper's third murder is one of the most dramatic of all because it's the only one in which he was very nearly caught and it's the only one in which he was seen in the act by a witness. I'm going to show you where these dramatic events took place and our route begins here at Allgate East Tube Station. To get to the site, turn right out of the station entrance and proceed down Commercial Road for about a quarter of a mile to Henrique Street where you will turn right. In 1888, Whitechapel was a Victorian slum. Over 80% of the families in this area had only a single room each to live in, often with up to nine people per room. Drunkenness, thievery and prostitution would have been everywhere. However, by the end of September 1888, the intensification of the police activity in the streets of Whitechapel had seen a dramatic downturn in the crime rate. There were newspaper reports that a dreadful quiet has descended onto the east end of London, and people began to wonder if the murders had come to an end. But on the last day of September, Jack the Ripper was to prove them horrifyingly wrong by murdering twice in less than an hour. Here we are, turning right into Henrique Street. But in 1888, this was Burner Street. The name has been changed to shake off the street's shocking history. Indeed, you can still see the painted out sign of Burner Street behind the new one. At 12.45 on the morning of the 30th of September, 1888, Israel Schwartz was walking where I am now when he saw a man attacking a woman in the gateway of Dutfield Yard, which used to stand here, siding onto the Polish and Jewish Working Men's Socialist Club. What stands here today is a school. Now children play on the exact spot where Jack the Ripper murdered his third victim. On that evening, Israel Schwartz thought he was witnessing a domestic dispute, so he crossed over the road and went home. But we know he actually saw Jack the Ripper in the act of murder, because only 15 minutes later, Louis Deemschutz came down Burner Street and turned his pony and cart into Duckfield Yard. As he did so, the horse suddenly reared up with alarm and pulled away to the right. Something had disturbed it. Dean Schutz climbed down to investigate and saw what he at first took to be a bundle lying in the centre of the yard. But as his eyes grew accustomed to the dark, he saw it was a woman lying there. He, he struck a match to gain a better view. But in that brief second's light, Dean Schutz saw it was the body of a woman. Now, had Dean Schutz acted differently at that stage, the chances are Jack the Ripper would have been caught almost instantly because the possibility is the Ripper was hiding here in Duckfield Yard when Dean Schutz struck that match. Had he raised the alarm there and then, the police would have come running to the scene and the Ripper would have been taken. The woman's name was Elizabeth Stride, nicknamed Long Liz Stride, and her throat had been slashed clear back to the spine. Some sense have ghoulishly nicknamed her Lucky Liz Stride because there were no other mutilations to the body. What seems apparent here is this is an interrupted Ripper murder. He's murdered Elizabeth Stride. He's about to commence the mutilations when the cart comes around the corner and disturbs him. So he jumps back into the shadows and it's that sudden movement that startles the pony, causing it to shy to the left. Deemsh is distracted. He's looking, he's investigating, and this gives the Ripper ample opportunity to step out of the shadows and move off in another direction. The Ripper had narrowly escaped, but the murder of Elizabeth Stride had not satisfied him. It had merely given him a taste for blood. And he went off into the night, angry, perhaps even a little excited, like a wild animal on the hunt for another victim. And within 45 minutes, he'd found one.